I can honestly now smell those beautiful spring mornings, those really warm summer evenings where I'm rolling around the countryside, arm out the window, driving my beloved Jag, just having the best time in the world. However, just three days after picking up the Jag, after its extensive MOT work that it had done, noticed quite a big issue. To recap, the Jag had failed its MOT previously quite badly, and so I thought it would be best to get myself a second opinion, just in light of you know making sure that any undertaking I was going to commit to was the best possible choice. And so I opted to take the car to a Jaguar specialist for a second opinion, uh, which is exactly what I did. And they had the car for around three weeks and they told me exactly what needed to be done for it to pass the MOT, at which point didn't actually include rust, which was a good thing. So around three weeks later, I went along very eagerly, excited to go and pick up the Jaguar. And well, I was met with a pretty surprisingly large bill something I hadn't quite expected. Probably I should have done, but I wasn't prepared for it. And uh, well, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go ahead and click in the right hand side of the screen now to go and see how much money I've spent on this Jaguar in the three months or so that I've owned it. So after I'd sold some organs to foot that bill, I drove the car home. And although I expected that at least to be fun and to help me justify the money I'd just spent, it was anything but because the tracking immediately, the alignment of the wheels was way off and just made the whole driving experience pretty horrible. There was a really annoying rattle and, and knock coming from the back, which subsequently I found out to be a very loose exhaust mount. And there was something I noticed that was just, I couldn't really put my finger on it. It felt like the steering wheel wasn't connected to the front wheels. It felt very, very vague and almost like it had a mind of its own. The best way I could describe it is that it was almost like this steering wheel was not attached to the front wheels, but in fact, it was attached to a rudder at the back of the car. You sort of turn the wheel and the whole thing just yours. Now I thought because the car had quite a lot of suspension work done, potentially it stiffened it up somewhat and it was closer to the characteristic of what this car was meant to be. But then I kept driving and I thought, this doesn't feel safe, let alone how the car should have been designed. However, at that point, I didn't read into it too much because the noise of the exhaust rattling at the back was far, far more irritating. And so that was uh, taking all of my attention. So after that, I did a few more journeys in the car, although I was never really exceeding 40, maybe 50 miles per hour. I then had the new tires fitted. I wonder if that would make any difference, but it didn't make any difference to the way that the car sort of had this strange handling issue. Naturally, I did email the garage with my frustrations, listing what I sort of ascertained the symptoms of this handling issue to be. And to their absolute credit, they rung me back within five minutes of sending that email. I'd barely pressed send and I had a phone call from the owner of this garage and he said, that's not good, bring the car in, We'll look through it together and you know we'll get this sorted which actually changed my opinion of them so much i think just customer service makes such a big difference to how the person paying feels if you have good enough customer service and you make a customer feel valued that customer will spend unlimited amounts of money with you but anyway this is not a uh, customer service tutorial video uh, this is hopefully a resolution for this issue because right now we're on the way to said Jag specialist. We're going to have a look at it and hopefully hopefully they're not just going to tell me that I've gone a bit mad and that I've, I'm noticing a null issue. But I have to say, and I'm going to demonstrate in a second, it, it doesn't seem right. So here we are, we're going 50 miles an hour now and I don't want to scare the bill behind me by swerving all over the place. But if I was just to change direction, it's going to be impossible for you to see on camera, but it's almost like I turn the wheel and the front wheels go a little bit, but then the back wheels go a lot more, almost as if they're steering. It's a very, very weird feeling. And the thing that actually prompted me to write the email this morning is last night I went to a birthday event and it was about a 50 mile each way trip, which largely involved motorway driving. And so I took the car up to 70 miles an hour for the first time and just changing lanes at 70 miles an hour felt terrifying. The car, yeah, I mean, it's 
almost like it's drifting. It's a very, very odd experience, and it feels like the back of the car is not at all doing what the front of the car is doing, or at least what you're telling the front of the car to do. So, yeah, I'm not happy with it at all, and I thought, you know, I'm not gonna be doing any more miles on this thing until we get this looked at. So, yet another thing to do on the list of many things that need doing with this car, but it's all fun and games, and it's all going towards making this, well, it probably will end up being the nicest example of a V8 S-Type anywhere, even though Richard Hammond absolutely hates it and says I should scrap it immediately. It's Joel, it's, um, it's hideous, destroy it. Also, over any form of sort of bump or pothole or drain cover, the whole thing just seems to skip across it. It's very, very bizarre. Oh, look, another S-Type. And they also have here, I don't know if you can see, I'll go alongside it, a Jiveny Green Range Rover, like my old one. Love that thing. Okay, please be helpful, please be helpful, please be helpful, please be helpful, please be helpful. Wish me luck. So we put the Jag up in the air to have a look at what might be causing this handling issue. Funnily enough, this was the first time I'd ever actually seen the underneath of the car for myself. It was also a great chance for me to have a quick look under the car at these sill covers to see how badly rusted they were. But of course, most of the rust work that's gonna be needed to be done is gonna be behind those sill covers. But nonetheless, they spent about 20 minutes looking underneath to see if anything was wrong, they put anything on wrong or not properly, and didn't really find a thing. What they could ascertain from it is that potentially the toe or the alignment of the wheels was a little bit off and it would probably only have been accentuated by having new suspension components fitted to the rear of the car and not to the front. Okay, so I've just been in there with them and they've been adjusting a few little bits. There was nothing they said that obviously looked strange. The only thing they've adjusted is the toe, I think, on the rear left. I'm not sure exactly, but they just asked me to come out and drive it around the industrial estate and see what it feels like. And I wanna say it does feel a little bit less nervous actually, but I'm not sure, because I, I know I'll, I'll leave and then immediately it will start feeling strange again, but it's hard, because you can't really get it up to, you can't get up to 70 miles an hour in here. And um, that's where the problem is, is most apparent. Okay, well I felt like it felt better just driving it around there what the guys here recommend is that i get a four wheel alignment done they said they would have done it but theirs is not working seems to be the the case with lots of alignment places their machines are always broken so he says get an alignment done because obviously they've done basically they've done lots of rear suspension he just showed me under the car and i got a few clips of it but they basically did lots of rear suspension to get it through the mot and the front, none of the front essentially. So it's quite stiff at the back and it's non-adjustable suspension. So that could be part of it, the fact that it's just a bit stiffer at the back now. But also he thought the the toe on, on the, the rears was slightly off. So he's adjusted that a little bit and um, hopefully that will improve it somewhat, but he, he says, I should really get a four wheel alignment done on the car. So I want to just say as well, actually, that I by no means expect to spend 1500 quid and then have a perfect car, especially when it's a 24 year old one. I know that that's almost impossible. That will never happen. It will never be a perfect car. I mean, even when it was new, it was drastically flawed, this thing. So it's not what I expect at all, but I just, I just want, I guess I'm constantly chasing that one moment of, enjoyment or having that one one journey where i don't go oh what's that or oh that feels weird or what's that sound maybe i'll never get that but normally you can spend enough time and money on these cars and get them to to that point oh that's interesting the that's interesting okay so the the tracking or the I need to learn these terms. Alignment, tracking are things I get confused with, but since he's just adjusted that suspension, now the tracking is off more, but it doesn't seem to be as wallowy. 
So maybe they have got it right. Maybe that is what's wrong with it. It just needs, it now just needs a four wheel alignment, I think. That could be it. Tell you what, it's great being able to bring a car to an empty business park. I do love that engine. I mean, this is a wonderful engine. I was gonna swear then. It is amazing. Well, I'll tell you what, we've got a national speed limit road, so let's get it up to 60 and see how it feels. I don't want to jinx anything, but they may well have, have rectified the issue that I, I went for. I think it might just be a alignment issue, which actually, although I have to now take the car to another garage for another thing to be done, then actually if it is just that, I'll, I'll, I'll sleep easy tonight. So. Let's get the alignment sorted and then hopefully, not only will it feel balanced as it does now, but the wheel will be pointing in the right direction. And then I think we can conclude that area, the MOT area can be concluded. And then coming up very soon, okay, we're going to be doing a lot and more importantly, I'm going to be doing a lot. I'm going to be teaming up with a garage, which lots of you have been asking me to try and do. I'm going to be teaming up with a really cool garage with a YouTube channel and they're going to be helping me rectify the rust and the suspension and also I'm going to be having a go myself. So here we are, four wheel alignment time. Also I think it's a free alignment check whether or not they then have the capacity to do the alignment. I'm not sure. But we're at the most wonderful place in the world, Quick Fit, the place that completely messed up my Porsche Boxster. But we're here again, out of necessity. Wish me luck. Okay, so I've just got home, just drove the car back from Quick Fit, and have to say, the four-wheel alignment, it's worked. The car now, although I haven't taken it back up to motorway speed yet, Driving home, the steering was dead center and true, and there weren't any sort of weird wobbles or skipping from the car. So I'm pretty happy. These are the results from the four wheel alignment. They're still at the rear a little bit strange. I think that's the most recent or, yeah. So I don't know, it's obviously not quite as adjustable as some other things, but at least from the driver's seat, it seems to, it seems to have done the trick. So there we have it then, and although I essentially feel a bit stupid because I've made an entire video out of an alignment issue, I'm really happy the car is now sorted. Next week, you're gonna see me finally take the Jaguar to a Jaguar meet. And so all I've got to do now is put the car on trickle charge and tuck it away until then. And the very week after that, it's going in for its surgery. It's going in for all of this work that I keep talking about, the work where you're going to see me hold a spanner so do stay tuned for that and if you're not subscribed to the channel already and you're enjoying this series with the s-type do make sure to subscribe now thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all very very soon